Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Benet, and we are continuing our video series on forming Catholic gentlemen. Now, we've all been horrified by the mass killings of the past few months. It seems that not a week goes by without a news report that sounds so similar, a young man killing innocent people with one or more high-powered weapons. What does this tell us about how we should raise boys to be men? What can we as Catholics do to raise the standards of character and morality and strive for a culture led by Catholic gentlemen? My name is Kevin, as I mentioned, and today I will be interviewing Father Daniel Bowen. He is the vocation director of the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mercy. So, Father Daniel, would you lead us in prayer? Absolutely. I'd be glad to. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his holy will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name amen. of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Father. Serenity prayer, right? <laughs> yes, yes. That's Classic, what we need. That's what we need. But, but important and beautiful prayer. Mm -hmm. So these murders reflect a, a different kind of social upheaval than in the past. Uh, they're not motivated by war, by religious ideas, by ideological conflict, or even private grudges. These are There are studies, such as the Violence Project, that they come. They seem to come up with a common profile on the part of, part of the perpetrators, and so they they are things like childhood trauma, uh, specifically violence in the home, sexual assault in, in the home, parental suicide, uh, and extreme bullying. Uh, there's also a psychological buildup in the time before the act on the part of the person toward uh, toward others, and so there are signs of hopelessness despair, isolation, self-loathing, uh, thoughts of suicide, and oftentimes rejection by peers. And then there's copycat killings. And uh, these researchers have noticed they happen about a week after a similar incident. Uh, this is when the media has thoroughly covered the events. So what can we make from all of this, Father? Well, these are certainly difficult times. And, and of course, we, we grieve with the families of the victims in, in Highland Park, uh, in Uvalde, in Tulsa, Buffalo, and, and in all these other places where these great tragedies have occurred. And of course, as faithful Catholics, we, we need to pray first and foremost, right? And, but also to form an attitude and a plan to respond to this phenomena in a truly Christian way. Um, and the U.S. bishops uh, have spoken out on this. Um, the heads of four of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Committees wrote to the members of Congress on June 3rd uh, saying the following. Uh, they basically were saying this, quote, there's something deeply wrong with a culture where these acts of violence are increasingly common. There's something deeply wrong with a culture where these acts of violence are increasingly common. And Right, and they urged the elected officials to address, uh, as they said, uh, all uh, quote all aspects of the crisis, all aspects of the crisis, including mental health, the state of families, the valuation of life, the influence of entertainment and gaming industries, bullying, and the availability of firearms. Unquote. So I'd like to add that my observations that in the news reports of such incidents, you'll often hear that word evil used a lot, right? Um, 
And of course it is, it is evil. They're correct in saying so. But, but it's more than just a failure on the part of our leaders to properly organize human society. Um, the origin of evil, if I may say so plainly, is the devil, okay? The devil is real, right? And it was that devil's temptation of Adam and Eve way back when that led to original sin, right? And there's a tendency to sin. Original sin has been inherited by, by all of us, every human being without exception. Um, Christopher Check, um, who's the editor of Catholic Answers, um, which is a, a, an effort I do support, Catholic Answers. If you're not familiar with that, uh, you certainly should seek them out online or listen to their, their podcasts or their radio program. Um, the uh, Catholic, uh, Christopher Check shed some light on this when he wrote a recent article that he entitled The True Roots of Mass Violence, The True Roots of Mass Violence. And in this article, he quoted St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. This is excellent, right? St. Paul says this, for we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And then Mr. Check added, there are demons at work in the world. And these demons are persons, not just vague forces or bad feelings. Very, very yeah. insightful. Yes, yes. And and so, uh, you know, out of all these areas of temptation of the devil, is there some area of our society uh, that the devil seems to be attacking uh, more in, in very directly and more than others, perhaps? Well, I think that one of the uh, main institutions under direct attack of the devil is the family. Okay. Um, there's a breakdown in the family that's really not been seen before in the, to this extent uh, in this country. Um, and in that article that I quoted, uh, Christopher Check says that there is some solid research that expresses the idea that social chaos, as he says, quote, fills the vacuum left by the retreat from marriage. Fills the vacuum left by the retreat from marriage. And he suggests that the government should encourage marriage and the traditional family. And the, the ads also quote, closer to the truth is the causal relationship between the disintegration of marriage and the family and the abundant social pathologies that afflict the children of broken homes. And, and I agree uh, with Mr. Check. Um, therefore Catholics who are married and want to do something about mass shootings, which should be all, they should live fully and in a public way, the teachings of the Catholic Church concerning the sacrament of matrimony. Okay, so right there. And Mr. Check adds, don't divorce and stop contracepting. Right, he's calling it out. And he also adds, that sounds glib, I know. But matrimony is a sacrament. So with it comes all the graces needed to live it to the fullest. And I, com I completely agree with him that, that such divine grace, in fact, is the ultimate remedy for evil, not a social program. As good as some of those may be, we need God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds like it's right on the mark, Father. Uh, this isn't the first time that children have rebelled and acted violently. And, you know, we see it throughout history, of course. Uh, but what about the, the history of your religious order? Uh, do you know of any saints in your order, the order of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mercy, uh, you know, who have encountered this and, and whose lives somehow shed a light for us with this problem? Well, yes, there is, as a matter of fact, a St. Peter Armengol or a San Pedro Armengol, however you want to say, obviously he was of Spanish origin, so Pedro would be more correct, but St. Peter Armengol for all intents and purpose uh, is a perfect example of a wonderful saint 
uh, that can help shed some light for us. Uh, he lived in the 13th century in Spain. And as a child, he was inclined to violence. Okay. Um, but ultimately, he would see the error of his ways and experience a powerful religious conversion. Um, so I'll share a little bit about him. St. Peter spent his childhood and his adolescence in a quiet family atmosphere of honesty. Uh, uh, however, Peter, despite that, displayed a violent temper, and, and he rebelled against everyone around him. He was drawn in by bad companions and to a dissolute and criminal life. Uh, ultimately, he became a robber and hung out with a gang of bandits, uh, completely forsaking his family. And, and despite the great uh, um, atmosphere that it was for him in upbringing. So Peter Amengal's father was, was a nobleman. And he was ultimately commissioned by the king to rid the area of thieves. It was this big problem in the area. And so he went about the task to, to, with his men to, uh, uh, to begin to rid their land of this, and they were attacked by the robbers. And who do you think ended up being the leader of these robbers? It was his own son, Peter. All right. So, so by the hand of Providence, again, God, God's divine hand here, uh, Peter, in that moment, in confronting his father face to face, he was ready to rob and kill his own father. He had a change of heart. Uh, he laid down his sword in front of his father and begged him for his pardon and forgiveness. But of course, you, you do the crime, you got to do the time. So Peter, of course, was, was arrested. He was brought to trial and the judge sentenced him to death for all that he had done uh, as, as this gang member in, in harming, killing, um, stealing. Uh, Peter had admitted, again, the error of his ways, um, and he ultimately begged the judge for clemency. Um, and because of his father's great service to the king, uh, and I would say also Peter's sincerity, there was a sense that this was a true conversion. Uh, Peter was, in fact, pardoned. Uh, it wasn't just a joke for him or some way to get out of it. And in fact, he was so profoundly touched and moved and felt a summons to reorder his life that he decided to, to become a consecrated religious. Um, and so he, he entered our own order, the order of the blessed Virgin Mary of mercy. And of course the order of mercy was founded on the mission of redeeming Christians whose faith was in danger of being lost uh, after, after being captured by Muslim captors. And uh, so brother Peter Armengol uh, would go on to join the order and distinguish himself, particularly by a strong penitential spirit and his courage in promoting and, uh, and embarking in these ransom missions to, f to free the captives. And uh, it's uh, recorded that St. Peter Armengol participated in redeeming more than 100 persons uh, in his work. And, and at one point, in fact, his captors hung him from the gallows, they decided we're just going to kill this guy. He's too much, too much, too much of proclaiming Christ. Maybe he's converting Muslims, whatever their reasons are. They just decided we're going to we're going to hang him from his neck till he dies. But by a miracle, absolute miracle by God, um, he hanging from that tree three to six days, somewhere like that. Like there's no way possible he should be surviving. He he lived. He looked now you know, he when Peter was asked about this uh, and it messed up his neck for the rest of his life, but he lived and he told the story that it was the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Virgin Mary came and held him up while he was hanging from the neck. Uh, and uh, that's how he he lived. So he went on to live another few decades. In fact, yeah. Father, a, could it, if, if, if I can, that's a tremendous story. Uh, and, and since it is, we do have some pictures, uh, some paintings of St. Peter I'd like to show on the screen here. Oh, all right. Sure. Yeah. If we, if we could just pause a little bit. All righty. And let's see. Can you all see the, the screen here of, of uh, St. Peter? It's a painting. And just to, I'll share some more details as you want to go yeah. through some of these pictures. Okay. Uh, just so, so people know. To get a sense of so Peter died in, in 1304 and and since he was almost martyred, 
his name was entered by special privilege in the Roman martyrology in the year 1688. Uh, and here's some of the things we can learn from uh, St. Peter Armengol. Um, first, and even in good families, a child can come under an evil influence, okay? Um, we often don't know, of course, the source of psychological problems in a person, whether their own will or it's through bad influences or temptations or some combination uh, of these factors. Um, another thing that we can learn is that the evil one, the devil, tempts people in different ways. And we must, of course, resort to prayer and the sacraments in order to resist him. And then, uh, lastly, even the worst criminal, all right? And Peter was a pretty bad dude, right? <laughs> even the worst criminal can experience a conversion, a sincere conversion, and change their ways and amend their lives. So uh, we, we must never give up on someone who has done even the most evil of deeds. We have to pray for them. We have to do all that we can to help the person reform. Um, and on a wider scale, we must promote traditional marriage in our society. We need the stability that it gives to us. And, and again, when I say by traditional marriage, marriage is between one man and one woman for life, period. Okay. And oh, so, by the way, um, if you're interested in learning more about St. Peter Armengol, uh, there's a video that we made uh, called From Gangster to St. Peter Armengol. Uh, uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, uh, Mercy Darian Friars USA, and, and search for St. Peter Armengol, you'll, you'll find that video and others. There's been a song composed about him and such. So I'd recommend having a look at that, but he's really a great inspiration to everyone, especially those of us who have maybe kind of lost our way or, or for people that we know that have perhaps gone into a, a very extreme pattern of sin. There still is hope and possibility of redemption for, for them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's tremendous. Uh, wh what a story. Uh, you know, and, and of course, you know, you, it, it's, we recall uh, St. Paul's conversion and St. Paul was, uh, his story is a little bit different. But he was full of zeal and pursued the persecution of Christians, even though he thought he was doing right. Uh, and, and, but and, but St. Paul and St. Peter had had a lot of zeal for for holiness and for just going to the max, it seems like in in their converted lives. So uh, you know, I guess God took their personality and uh, sort of sharpened them and made them holy and turned them in the right direction. So well, there's uh, always that great quote. You probably heard it. Maybe it's trite, but it is true. Right? God writes straight with crooked lines. Right? And mm -hmm. if you could take a murderer like Saul uh, again, he. he you know, he wanted to do God's will and he felt that he was in killing Christians. So he was already kind of on the, you know, in the right direction, but Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Right. So there was, you know, when he was confronted by Jesus himself and saying, look, you, you've got to, you, you, what you want to do is right, but you're going the wrong way about it. Um, and, and allowed Paul to, yeah, powerfully hand his life over to God in a new way and began uh, proclaiming the faith that he was persecuting, doing it. It's a complete 180, you know, um, that's great hope for all yeah. of us, you know, even yeah. if we've done lesser, right. Lesser evils, although none of it's any good. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's amazing. So maybe we should take St. Peter Amengal as a patron saint for our efforts to reform marriage and to raise wholesome and holy children in our society. And I think for single men to, uh, they also are examples to, to the younger guys, uh, and, and they can, single men have a real role to play and in, in, in a way they are as fathers to them in whatever capacity they may uh, influence the younger guys, maybe younger uh, nephews or kids on the block, you know, and so there's always uh, a way for a single man to be a father. I know, because I was single for many years before I got married. So, sure. uh, so, you know, father, here, here's the thing. Can you, uh, wrap this up with with a prayer uh once again if if our viewing audience would like to go see the videos on saint peter armingall and there's more than one just go to youtube and search for saint peter armingall a-r-m-e-n-g-o-l 
Mercedarian Friars USA. So, Father, can you Absolutely. can you close with a prayer? I recommend, and I and I would say, and it's a great idea because we want to begin, we want to end in prayer. Right, prayer is essential. Uh, but um, yeah, Armengol, Saint Peter Armengol, I would recommend again somebody, some probably someone you've never heard of before. Uh, this is the moment for you to know this saint, this heavenly intercessor who's alive in heaven with Christ, who wants and longs to befriend you, to encourage and support you in your walk of faith, or or others. Again, right, he decided to embrace that lifestyle of gangs, you know, that it's a, it's a big problem, like in LA and some of the big urban areas gang, you know, to join a gang gives you identity and a, and a family in that, but it's all in the wrong kind of way. Right. And, and they're going to be promoting violence and, and uh, human trafficking, all kinds of different issues. It's not the answer. Um, but um, you know, even in, in lesser ways of pursuing patterns of evil and cycles of sin, like pornography addiction and that, uh, the, a lot of these things are aimed at, at, at us at younger and younger ages purposely to get us enticed into following evil. And then one bad thing leads to another until we're so far away from our Lord that uh, we, we no longer hear his voice or, or recognize the necessity of, uh, of his place in our life. So Peter Armengol is definitely uh, a go-to for us. And in many of the countries um, that the Mercedarian Friars are in, we're in around 20 countries, uh, page, Peter Armengol is usually a patron saint for youth groups, youth movements that because of, again, of his youth, uh, you know, he had given it all over to sin and of course had the great, uh, had the great conversion over. So this this hope for all of the young, you know, again, this is a, a, a that's that impressionable age that where the devil, if he can break us away from our family, get us into ourselves, get us with some bad company, you know, it could be bad news, but uh, God is good news. And uh, so if we can, uh, uh, ask for assistance and help. Maybe some of these young men won't go into that direction or feel isolated or feel disconnected and be open to evil, that evil that may lead them to do some of the horrendous things that we see happening in our streets and our cities here in the United States today. So again, Leah, let's wrap up uh, with a prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We praise you, St. Peter Armandol, for your glorious martyrdom. After your dissolute youth, your observance of strict penance and burning charity were the fruit of your unbounded love for Christ crucified and the love which God and his holy mother Mary graced you. Come to our aid in times of trouble and obtain for us the assistance of your and our heavenly mother. We acknowledge that we too have sinned, and yet, like you, we desire to be deconverted. Obtain for us, St. Peter Armengol, a love for prayer, for penance, and for our neighbor, so that we may rejoice with you and all the saints forever in eternity. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you very much, Father. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. So tell your friends.